2019 is the year of building habits, and I am going to encourage you and challenge you to really think about some of those habits that's gonna make you a better person, it's gonna make you a happier person, but it's also gonna make you be a better teacher. Let's do it. So this video is sponsored by Home Chef. Uh, Home Chef is a food delivery service that brings pre-proportioned ingredients right to your doorstep. Guys, I love Home Chef. I cannot even tell you how much it really has changed my life as a mom, as a person, as a teacher. Uh, I feel like I have so much more time back in my day. So I'm gonna encourage every single one of you that if you have not yet tried out Home Chef, uh, it's 2019, come on, you gotta try it. I mean, give it a shot. So there's a link down in the description box that you can follow. Uh, use the code Bridget30 to get $30 off of your first box, $30. That's two servings absolutely for free. So give it a shot guys, follow that link in the description box and then we're gonna get going with this video. So the very first habit that I wanna share with you guys is I wanna be more intentional with my time. Now this isn't something that is a brand new concept to me. This isn't something that I am kind of starting fresh for the very first time in the year. I've never done this before. In fact, this is a habit that I was actually pretty darn good at. Um, it seems as though 2018, because of so many different factors that, that were kind of happening around me, I seem to let go of being intentional with my time. And this is the year for me to try to refresh some of those skills that I used to have and put them back into practice. And that's okay. I think we all need to remember that as humans, we are not always going to have every piece of our life together. We're not always going to be 100% perfect all the time. And that sometimes some of those skills that we feel as though we're really good at, we start to take away our attention from it and we start to put our attention on something else. Well, what ends up happening is that then our focus on what we were really good at starts to slack a little bit. And I think that's exactly what happened with me and being intentional with my time. So let's talk about what it means to be intentional with my time. One of the first areas that I'm talking about is really focusing on batching my work and saying that during specific times of the day that I'm gonna focus on maybe planning out my word study. And maybe I'm also gonna focus during you know this time to really my emails or to planning out my reading instruction. But batching your work so that you're not jumping from one thing to another to another, your brain doesn't have the opportunity to focus in one area. So by batching your work, you have a, a stronger chance of being able able to be the most productive in that area when you're only thinking about one specific topic. So batching my work is one area. Another area is really focusing on how I'm spending my time throughout the day, during the work day. Uh, I am that teacher that I really like to be here early in the mornings and really late at night because no one else is here. And when no one else is here, I have I think a better opportunity to be able to get a lot more done because I'm not distracted by others. And so during the school day, when everyone is here, I am a little bit more distractible. I tend to wander, I start having conversations with other people. So then what ends up being a 40 minute time for me to be able to get something done turns out to be a 15 or 20 minute time. And then I'm stressing out trying to get all of the things that I wanted to get accomplished during that time. So I think that's something that's also really important is being able to tell people, you know what, I can't do this right now. I'm gonna catch up on this conversation or hey, you know what, text me or call me a little bit later. We'll, we'll continue this. I have to go get this done. And knowing that that is gonna be okay. Uh, but really focusing and being intentional with my time there. I also wanna be intentional with my time, not only at school and when I'm spending my time here, but also at home. And knowing that during certain time, I really need to devote myself to my family and my children. And knowing that maybe I'll give myself 30 minutes, an hour to really devote myself to either emails or focusing on lesson planning or getting something ready or grading, getting something ready in Schoology uh, and, and having that time set aside. But I need to be better and more intentional with how I spend my time throughout the day. My second habit for this year is to be intentional with planning ahead 
with an end goal in mind. And I think that that part is really, really important uh, is having that end goal in mind. I think some of us can plan ahead. We can say, oh, you know what? I have this standard. I have this standard. I'm going to do all of these different activities. Here's all the things that I'm going to do. But if we don't have an end goal in mind, then we never really have a stopping point. We never really have that point of closure. And I think that's really important with me. I need to know that when I set out to do something, it, whether it be that I'm doing a curriculum unit, um, whether it be that I'm you know, continuing something on with a program or I'm starting projects, I need to know what is it that I am trying to accomplish? What is What do I want that end result to be? Uh, because when you know that end result, you have a better picture of how long it's gonna take you. You have a better picture and an understanding of all of the different steps that you need to take in order to get to that end goal. And you feel more successful when you have all of those steps out. Something that I do in reading that I'm continuing working on and kind of perfecting this skill is having a curriculum pacing. And what I mean by that is I kind of set up and I say, you know what, if I'm teaching a character unit, by the end of this unit, I want to make sure that my students have an understanding of traits, character change, and this is for fourth grade, uh, characters, uh, character traits, character change, whether they have they understand a minor and a major character, a flat and a round character, kind of going into all of these different pieces. These are all of the things that I really want my students to be able to understand. Uh, and for me, once I have that piece, then I can think of, okay, well, how is it that I'm gonna get my students there? If they're coming in not really having an understanding of characters at all, then, you know, I'm gonna start with, you know, what is a character? Where am I gonna go next? I'm gonna start talking about major and minor characters, round and flat characters, some of the differences between that. From there, I'm gonna end up going into, you know, talking about character traits versus character feelings and what are, how do we identify some of those? But for me, having that pacing guide and having that progression never changes. Uh, a progression of what you're gonna teach for skills never changes. You're always gonna teach that progression to students. The how is gonna change depending on your students and the needs that you have in your classroom. But the pacing should never change unless your curriculum changes. That's when you have to kind of readjust and make changes to your pacing. But for me, that's really important. I really wanna kind of fix that piece that's kind of happening in my life and really understand my pacings and get better at understanding that progression, that end goal in mind for my students, because that's gonna make me a better teacher and it's also gonna help me along with my time management. So. Many of the habits that you're gonna kind of hear here, uh, a lot of them are gonna go hand in hand. Um, and I don't know if you guys have picked up on it, but I've already started saying intentional quite a bit. So if you've seen my last video that I did on my 2019 life planner, my word of the year is being intentional and really intentional with lots of different aspects in my life. So these habits that I'm talking to you about Every single habit that I chose is for me to be more intentional in a certain area. And so I need to be intentional not only in school with having an end goal in mind, but also with my family, with my business. Where do I want this to end up going for me? Uh, projects that I want to place and put in place, whether it be like a bathroom renovation project. Well, where's the end goal? What do I end up wanting it to look like? If I have that clear vision, then I know the steps that I have to take. And so those steps start to become easier on me and it's gonna reduce my stress and it's gonna make me me, a happier person and a better mom, a better wife and a better teacher. So that is my second habit is being intentional with my planning, but also making sure that I have that end goal in mind. My third habit is to pursue creativity. And what I mean by that is that my lessons that I have chosen to use in 2018 uh, they weren't as creative as I would have liked them to be. It's always interesting because as you go through your teaching and some of you veteran teachers out there, I know you're totally gonna feel me and you're gonna be raising your hands up down in those comments because you need to let all of these other really younger teachers know that it's okay and it's acceptable and I think we all tend to go through these slumps in our teaching careers. But 
I felt as though in 2018, I was in that slump of, I would just do the lesson. I wasn't looking for different avenues of trying to make it creative. I was just kind of that robot that would come in. I would do my lessons. I would be excited about my lessons. I would enjoy teaching my lessons, but I wasn't going the extra mile of looking at how could I make this more creative? How can I really bring out the excitement in my lessons and make it um, more fun for my kids and make them be excited about their learning. I was in a slump uh, and I, I for myself, for me as a teacher, <laughs> as an educator, I need to pursue more creativity in my everyday lessons. I need to figure out how can I ignite that excitement in my students again? How can I get them excited about the most <laughs> the most boring concept that is out there. How can I ignite the excitement back in my students? And so 2019, I'm gonna go back to pursuing my creativity and to really showing my students how you can make anything, anything exciting and fun again. My fourth habit is uh, one of, I think, my most important habits that I really need to incorporate more. Again, I did a little bit of this like here and there. I would, you know, kind of dabble in it a little bit, but I don't think that I really put forth the true potential. And that's making learning relatable to the real world. It is unbelievably important for us as teachers to help our learners see the connections of what they're doing in their everyday life and how that applies to when they leave us. How does it apply? Because I can tell you I have students sitting in my, my room that are going to be coming in and saying, why do I need to know this? Why do I even need to care about this? And it is my job as an educator to show them how it's relatable to life, how all of these things make those connections for them. And so I need to figure out, even in some of the smallest pieces, and this goes back to my creativity, but even in the smallest of lessons, how does this relate to life? How can I, in some way, shape, or form, allow my kids to see the connections and also understand how this is gonna help them and benefit them in the future. So we have done as a MAC team, we've explored with project-based learning, we've explored with passion projects, where we're allowing our students to really see the connections between what we're learning, all of the different information, the skills, the strategies that we're teaching them here in class and showing them how it's connected into the real world. Some of you are gonna remember the big project that we did last year that was on our garden. And that garden was incredibly successful and it really benefited a lot of members in our community. And we're gonna continue on with our garden this year, but we're also gonna embark in a new project-based learning. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, but Bridget, I can't do a huge project like that every single time. Like, I can't continuously do those. They don't have to be huge projects. In kindergarten, I did a PBL every other month and they weren't gigantic projects. They weren't projects that were unmanageable. Really, it, all I did was really focus on what are some of those ideas, those skills that I can maybe teach and bring in some things from back in the real world. So I would walk around my community and I would think to myself, hmm, is this something that could apply to my students' learning? Is, you know, I would be walking through a store and thinking, does something here apply to my students learning. So even after I left here in my classroom, I was still thinking every single day of what is it that I'm doing in my everyday life with my own children that could apply to my kids back at school. What connections can I make between what I'm doing outside of school and what I'm teaching? And I would try to look for some of those connections. Guys, it could be something as simple as, do you go to the park and do you do something at the park? Is there something that you can do as far as distance goes? Is there something that you can do as far as stretching? Is there something we can learn about with our informational reading when it comes to um, exercises? Anything that you can think out there, sports, kids are so big into sports. Um, but bringing back some of those connections and really having my kids see the connections. I think it's incredibly important that when we think about our instruction, we really need to focus more on providing those connections for our kids 
to making everything relatable to them because they're the ones that are doing the learning. And when you're giving that instruction and you are helping them see those connections, they're gonna value that information so much more. So 2019, we are all going to try and make more connections for our students, even in the smallest of lessons. Uh, I am gonna end this with one more thing. I was talking with a partner across the hall and um, or a teaching colleague across the hall and she was talking about fractions and how she would go through and she uses money for fractions. And I thought that that was such a great way to give instruction for fractions because it allows kids to see the what money is, how to use it, it reviews that skill, but it's a very small connection to fractions that allowed her students to also see the concept of money. So again, I challenge you to go back out there and really think about how can we all make our learning more relatable to our kids. So my fifth habit that I wanted to share with you guys is being more intentional with my food choices. In 2018, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid autoimmune disease. Uh, and being diagnosed with that really rocked my world because I had to make so many changes when it came to my lifestyle. Um, I don't know if you guys kind of know me really personally. If you do, you are so lucky. Uh, but I am someone who doesn't like to drink water. I don't like to eat vegetables. I am a carbalicious type of person. I don't typically like to exercise, like that is me in a nutshell. And now all of a sudden I have doctors telling me, well, you have to eat better. You have to have certain portioned meals. You have to be gluten free. You need to do exercise. You have to drink more water. All of these things to kind of help my health so that all the symptoms that I was feeling would go away. Um, and I got to the point with my illness that I needed to make a change. I realized very quickly that I had to make this change to better myself and to continue doing the work that I want to do. So I started making changes at the beginning of last year and I struggled really, really hard with making so many of those changes. Uh, planning meals and figuring out what it was that I was going to eat and how much of it to make uh, because I have a tendency to just like eat as much as I can. All of that was something that I had to learn. It was a new habit that I had to learn for myself. And while I feel as though I have really grown in this past year, I still have more growth that needs to be done. Um, I still have more work that I need to do with my health to continue bettering myself in the long run so that I can be around for many, many, many years. Uh, and one of the ways that I do this is by using Home Chef. So in August, I was so lucky to be able to work and so excited to be able to work with this brand. And I didn't realize how beneficial this company was gonna really be for my life and how much of a change it was gonna make for some of those food choices that I wasn't making such a great choice in in the long run. So one of the things that I really like about Home Chef is that they have 18 different meal options to choose from. Um, the other time that we had gotten Home Chef a few weeks ago, my family had tried risotto for the first time and it was just so funny because we were all joking about how we were on Hell's Kitchen. So it really, kind of allows for us to try different foods that we've never tried before and I can try different vegetables that I haven't tried before and it is helping me to make better healthy choices. Um, I also really like the fact that they have little symbols to be able to help people who have allergens. So if you are someone who's wanting to do really low cal, um, low cal, low carb food choices, they have hearts. Um, anyone who has like the wheat that can't have the gluten, they also have those there so that you can, again, stay away from those foods that you know for a fact um, are not gonna be good for your health. So it really just allows for my family to be able to make some of those better choices. All of which are have the exact proportions that you need in order to make delicious home-cooked meals that is brought right to your doorstep without all the planning hassle, without having to go to the grocery store, without having to figure out and portion out all of your ingredients and making sure that you have everything that you need in order to make meals. Home Chef gets it all delivered to you in a nice, 
neat box. And for me, having it done for me was such a blessing in disguise. And I didn't realize how much I was really going to rely on Home Chef to kind of improve my eating habits. And they definitely have. So I've really been excited that I'm going to continue this partnership and working with them and talking about some of the great benefits that Home Chef can bring to so many families all over uh, because it has brought it has done wonders for my family and for me and my health this year. So if you guys have not already gotten onto Home Chef, clicked on that link, make sure that you do that. I will leave it down in the description box, but we're going to go ahead and I'm going to get to cooking and improving and continuing my 2019 habits of bettering myself and making sure that I am making the right food choices for me and for my family. Combined ground beef and seasoning blend. Everybody gets a little bit of everything. Ooh. It's the potatoes. The potatoes. You gotta work on your presentation, girl. Oh my god, those onions are delicious. What kind of onions are those? Uh, pearl. pearl onions. All right. So here's to being intentional with my food choices and getting my health back for 2019. My sixth habit that I wanna share with you guys is budgeting. Now I know budgeting is a little bit of a personal goal here and I will relate to how it goes with teaching in just a moment, but I am a huge fan of Dave Ramsey. In fact, I have his book, I have his audiobook, we have all of his materials to kinda of help you achieve that financial piece that he talks about. In fact, five years ago when I married my husband, he was the one who introduced me to Dave Ramsey. Uh, we took a Financial Peace University class Class at a local church uh, and we went through the whole process of becoming completely debt-free. We had paid off my car, we paid off my credit card debt that I brought into the relationship, we paid off my school debt, and we were completely debt-free. Um, and during that process, it really also helped me kind of understand how much I was spending towards my own classroom. Because I was spending like crazy, buying books, buying organizers, buying all of the different things that I needed, that I wanted in order to kind of um, fulfill whatever I wanted to fulfill in my classroom. Well, fast forward to now, or I guess maybe a year and a half ago, <laughs> we purchased a house in Pennsylvania. And um, in this process of buying this house, we went through and we renovated, we completely renovated the kitchen. Um, we've kind of done a lot of painting jobs here and there. And uh, it cost us a lot of money. <laughs> Who would have thunk buying a house costs a ton of money? <laughs> um, so at this point, uh, we are still completely debt free as far as like our cars, credit card debt. We don't have any of that. The only debt that we do have at the moment is our air conditioning. We put in a brand new air conditioning and heating unit this past summer because it is unbelievably hot and window units were not cutting it. So after all of that and really kind of spending a ton of money buying all these different types of tables and chairs for my classroom, um, I think this is the year for me to get back in the budgeting mode and really focusing on living more simply with minimalism, with having a focus of achieving that financial piece that Dave Ramsey talks about. So I am really gonna focus this year on uh, using the envelope system, going back to the envelope system. And this is something if you guys don't know about Dave Ramsey, definitely check them out. But um, I'm going to go back to using the envelope system for my classroom, for, you know, groceries, for everything that we use in our life um, and achieving that financial peace once again. My seventh and my final habit is to live with joy. Uh, last year, my focus was on being a um, minimalist and really kind of n achieving that minimalism lifestyle with n with not having to purchase so much stuff and not needing so much stuff in my life. And I think I still did, I did a pretty good job. I have definitely kind of changed from where I was maybe like three or four different, three or four years ago. Um, but I still have some growth in that area and I'm going to continue that growth. Uh, last year, I read the book by Marie Kondo and it's the life-changing magic of tidying up. In fact, y'all, 
it's on Netflix. You have to watch it. It's so good. I just love her so much. Um, but Marie Kondo really kind of opens up your eyes and really makes you understand about living with joy and not having stuff that just doesn't bring joy to your life. Uh, and I think this also applies to not only like materialistic things, but also the things on the outside, just being pursuing and living with that joy in life that if you want to do something, do it. If it doesn't bring you happiness and you're doing something, then don't do it anymore. Um, but really living with joy and embracing and loving every single part of your life because it, it is absolutely precious. Um, I think our lives are precious. The time that we have on this earth is very precious. Um, the time that we have with our children and our kids at school, um, all of it is very precious. And if you're not living with joy and if you don't have joy in your heart whenever you are, you know, kind of doing some of these things, then you have to ask, why am I doing it? Uh, and so that is kind of my goal for this year is really focusing back on my life and living with joy with my kids, with my family, um, with everything that I do that's kind of in between. And if it doesn't bring me happiness, I'm just not going to do it. There's no point in doing it, to be honest. So my very final, and I think it's one of the most important habits for me, is to live with joy. <clears throat> so guys, that is it. Those are my seven habits that I have for the year of 2019. I would love to know and hear kind of some of the habits that you have or that you are wanting to work on this year. Please leave them down in the comments below. Share some of the habits. If it's personal, then I totally understand. But if you want to share some of those and kind of have somebody who is also, you know, there understanding what you're going through, um, share them. Let me know how, uh, let me know what habits you have. So those are all of my seven habits, guys. Please, please, please do not forget that if you have not tried out Home Chef, to definitely use that link down in the description box. Make sure to use the code Bridget30 to get $30 off of your first box. $30, remember that's two free servings that you could get. So thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. Hit that like button, guys, to show some uh, support for this channel. And then also hit that bell so that you always receive notifications for when new videos are coming up. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope that you have a very, very blessed 2019. Um, and I hope that it is everything that you want it to be. I hope you have a good one guys and I will see you all very, very soon.